Hello, welcome back. Here we look at the Bitcoin economy. Obviously, Bitcoin is a digital currency that enables a payment in a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. And this is powered and approved by the consensus of its users. There is no central authority or middleman that controls it. So we look at transactions. A user generates a request to transfer a Bitcoin value from their account to another using a mobile device or computer. So let's say that's Alice and that's John. And Alice wants to send John some Bitcoin. So they go here. Alice types in her wallet, which you can get at many exchanges, a free wallet. So it's going to John and he's given his Bitcoin address as this here. Now, the amount, two bitcoins, you can send 0 0.0025 bitcoins, 10 bitcoins, whatever you want, small amounts. Send, so that would be sent then. So what happens here is that the Bitcoin client software is required to create a virtual wallet, a private key and public key. Now that is the public key, but you wouldn't be sending a private key. Let anyone know your private key. Always keep it safe in the house, in your lawyer's office, or just print it out and bind it up and keep it somewhere safe in the attic, anywhere you want. And the public key is for authenticating and securing each transaction. Now the request floats on the Bitcoin network. Now that network could be Afghanistan, Nigeria, could be America, could be France, or anywhere in the world really, until it uses in the network called Miners Pick It Up for Processing. So that could be Mr. Smith in Los Angeles on his uh, computer somewhere, and he's a small miner in the garage. And that could be someone like Mrs. Jones in London and she's mining from a little industrial unit down the road somewhere with a small little mining setup and these could be massive miners somewhere else in the world with huge industrial units full of computers and processors now one of these at random will pick it up and it'll be processed so that is what's being processed the request from her to him so that comes down and around the world and these are picked up and it's processed now during the mining process transactions are packed into data blocks and are randomly assigned with a header now this then would be a block and the header the nonce and the hash will cover this later in the course don't worry so it seems a bit uh, a lot of jargon and words you might not understand at the moment but from here comes the blockchain so here it is a block and then they have different numbers, nonce and hash. And then the miners compete to match the block's header with the nonce. We'll dis discover this later on in the course. So they're trying to match the block's header with a nonce. An arbitrary number used only once to get a short alphanumeric code called a hash which must have a value below a certain difficulty target. So each has hash accepted by the network is rewarded with Bitcoins. Currently at 25, uh, this will halve and then it halves again. And then this will halve again before 2021, which is the last time a Bitcoin will ever be produced because that is the rule that everyone must abide by to join the network. Otherwise, you're kicked off the network. And Satoshi wrote the rules back in 2008, 2009, when the credit crunch and the banking crisis came. He decided he wanted something better. And this is what he's come up with, Bitcoin crypto country it takes about 10 minutes to process a transaction and once it's done it is irreversible so the hash values are then added to the next blocks header creating a block chain which serves as the public ledger of all transactions ever made in the bitcoin network we'll have a look at live 
blockchains later on the internet and the first block ever produced was by Satoshi back in 2008 so all blocks since then have been added to his block and it goes on and on and on until 2021 thanks for watching